Peace, peace, peace. This your brother Monroe Jr. So if you've been keeping up with LeBron James, he recently came out and said that the NFL owners are old white men with slave mentalities towards their players. And he caused this commotion and this stare on his uh, show H on HBO called The Shop. And, you know, he kind of ruffled some feathers. And, of course, it made headlines and went viral. And uh, my whole take on him saying that NFL owners, uh, whom he characterized as old white men, that maintain a slave mentality towards players. I mean, that's just not in the NFL, though. You know what I'm saying? That's in the NBA also. So, uh, and uh, from what I was hearing on, I heard somebody say that LeBron said that's not necessarily the case with the NBA. And it's like, okay, our, our NFL and NBA players, a lot of them come from the struggle, right? We're not really financially literate and savvy to think outside of the box of those who are the owners of these leagues, right? But if the players would just recognize that they really have the juice, they could come together and create their own league overnight. But that shows that we're slaves, not physically, not meaning that we can't go where we want to go. Yeah, they have that freedom, but we can't think outside of the range or the realm of our former slave master. So we're mentally enslaved, right? So, and that's real. In fact, I'm going to play a clip of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan going further into this. This your brother Monroe Jr. I'm signing off. Pete. I want to close with basketball. Since LeBron was in the news. Have you ever seen such a clamor over our brothers? Did you hear how the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers talked about poor brother like he betrayed Cleveland by moving somewhere else? But guess what? We did the research. Let's look at who the commissioners of sports are. Who's still on the plantation? Let me show you. David Stern, Jewish, National Basketball Association Commissioner. Maurice Podoloff, the first president of the NBA. Bud Selig, Major League Basket Baseball Commissioner, Gary Bettman, National Hockey League Commissioner, Mark Cohan, Canada, Canadian Football League Commissioner, Don Garber, Major League Soccer Commissioner, Sidney Halter, the first commissioner of the Canadian football field. Now, Leslie Alexander Jewish owns the Houston Rockets. Mickey Arison is the owner of the Miami Heat. Miami Heat. Is that where LeBron is? Is that where Dwayne Wade is? Is that where Rosh is? Rosh is? Larry Brown was a U.S. basketball coach, but Mark Cuban the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. He's Jewish. Alan Cohen, former co-owner of the Boston Celtics and the New Jersey Nets, the New York Knicks, and the New York Rangers. William Davidson, 
principal owner of the Detroit Pistons of the NBA, the Detroit Shark of the WNBA, Dan Gilbert, owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now listen, you know, there's some plantations if you go to, they treat you better. But our brother went from one plantation owner who is Jewish to another plantation owner who is Jewish. And the Jewish owner in Miami was jumping up and down because these Negroes sitting here like they are the top stars. But in the background is the dude that's saying, boy, we're going to get $750 million coming in because of these three Negroes. Put their meat on a plantation. So Mr. Gilbert is hot with Mickey Arison. And guess what? They went for less money. Because see, black folk today can't be bought all the way out with money. They want a championship ring. Oh, oh, a ring. Oh. Damn. Look, look at you. Boy, you the craziest people. But God said he would choose a foolish people, and we certainly fit the bill, don't we? Look at all of us out there with bling bling, right? Come on. I got my bling, you got your bling right and we out blinging one another who you blinging from who's the diamond merchant who's the gold merchant who is running Johannesburg and the gold mines and Kimberly and the diamond mine talk to me that's why in the name jewelry is the name Jew because they run the industry Oh, you can get it at K's. They got you coming and going. Not only you, they got us. Wait now. Renan Katz from Israel, he's part owner of the Miami Heat. Herbert Cole, owner of the Milwaukee Bucks. Jimmy Krause. Jerry Krause, general manager of the Chicago Bulls. Jerry Reinsdorf, owner of the Chicago Bulls and the Chicago White Sox. A. Pollen, owner of WNBA's Washington Mystics. Bruce Ratner, owner of the New Jersey Nets. Howard Schultz, U.S. owner of Seattle Supersonics and the founder of Starbucks. Larry Tannenbaum, owner of the Toronto Raptors. Brett Yormark, president and CEO of the New Jersey Nets. Now look, see, you strong, strapping Negroes. You Negroes that are good for sport. The Quran said his world is sport and play. And every time you play, he gets rich. Every time you sport, he gets rich. He owns football. Arthur Blank, owner of the Atlanta Falcons. Steve Bornstein, president and CEO of the National Football League Network. Norman Brayman, former, former owner of the Philadelphia Eagles. We could just go on down the list to show you that you, you're on a plantation, brother. And when your days of playing are over, what's your condition? What's your condition? What's their condition? Did you know that top rank was started by Muslims? John Ali, 
and Jabber Muhammad with Bob Arum started top rank. John Ali don't have no more. Jabir Muhammad don't have it anymore. But Bob Arum, the Jewish guy, got the whole thing. Every black man today that's rich, he has friendship with a Jewish person. And it's that friendship that has made Jay-Z, P. Diddy, has made um, Russell Simmons, Beyonce. All our people got plenty of money. Oprah, plenty of money. But they have never learned how to network their money to produce real wealth for our people. So all the friendship that they have that makes them rich was never good enough to make us rich as a people. And so, beloved, in delivering this message, I know it may bring hurt to me and to us, but I also know that we will have the victory. The Jewish people have the force to hurt, and they also have what it takes to help. I've asked them, since your people put ours in this condition, why don't you help me raise our people up from the degraded state that your people have put them in? Do you think I'm wrong to ask them? I'm not asking them for a check to give to silly people. They're going to give it right back to them. 